Welcome back to Camera West TV. My name is Carlo, and on today's episode of Thumbprints and Signatures, we're taking a look at the 75 F1.4 Sumalux. Produced from 1980 to 2007 in Lights, Midland, Canada, yes, this lens was made in Canada, the 75 Sumalux holds a special place in the Leica lens development. Dr. Walter Mandler and his team created this lens in conjunction with the then new Leica M4P, which introduced 75 frame lines into the rangefinder. Prior to this, the only visible telephoto frame lines were the 90mm and 135mm. This lens followed the 50mm F1 Noctilux and shares some similarities with that lens. Much like the F1 Noctilux, Dr. Mandler and his team engineered and incorporated many aspects and performance attributes learned from the F1 into the 75 Sumalux to create the dreamy signature that this lens is known for. The combination of the focal length and the high speed aperture made for a high performance short telephoto lens that is perfect for portraiture that isolates your subject from its background, i.e. non-distracting, and for landscapes that create a sense of scale and depth. Since we just did a video on the 50F1 Noctilux, and it's also designed by Dr. Mandler, I wanted to see what this lens was all about, so I took it out to the sunset and made some photos. We're out here in the sunset, and I have my good friend Jerry helping me out film. So today we're gonna take out the 75 Sumalux, and we're gonna use it at maximum aperture for most of it, just to kind of show you the signature of this lens. It's very comparable to the F1 Noctilux that we did previously. You can see that video right up here. And should be fun. I know it's not on film, but can't pass up a classic car shot on camera. I feel like this person's car has just been like photographed to death. I keep getting confused because I keep looking at the 50 millimeter frame lines instead of the 75, so. If you're not used to shooting longer focal lengths, that's one thing to consider. What's up? Yeah. Actually, that's kind of cool. I hate how far back I have to like stand back for everything. Ugh. This is like one of those compositions where I want all three of those elements in the frame, but it's just too tight. It's like I'm looking at the, the Muni stop, the white car, and the... I was gonna call it a Ferris wheel, but windmill. <laughs> Something I found challenging was nailing critical focus through the rangefinder. I found myself using live view a lot just because it was easier to see if I was nailing critical focus at f1.4. If I was stopped down, typically I would nail focus, but most of the time I had to take a couple frames just to make sure I was getting the correct focus. So this lens was also designed by Dr. Mandler, and this lens in particular was actually his favorite out of the ones that he's designed. Um, I don't know if I should say that. Maybe I'll say that in post. I'll, I'll do more research on that. But I, everywhere that I've read says that this was his favorite lens, so you can fact check me, internet. I'm hoping that this was his lens, favorite lens. This lens does share a fair amount of properties with the 510 Noctilux. Granted, it is a whole stop less than the F1. The focal range still gives you this type of separation where you do isolate your subjects from your background and the compression that you get is unreal. Like, it's not too close where it's like a 90 or you have to keep stepping further back, but you also don't have to get too close as you would with a 50. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how to frame with the 75. Whoa. 
75 is I just want to get the whole scene. I think that's like the best way for me to like show off scale in this lens. But clearly, I don't know how far back to stand. I'm usually used to 90 or 105. This is kind of a weird in-between where it's not quite a 50 and it's not quite a 90. I guess this is kind of like the 35 of the tele focal range if you will. One tip that I came across was pre-focusing the lens and setting <laughs> it to a right. specific distance. So I tried that. Come on, just let me take your photo. Ah, and it's blurry. And clearly it didn't work on a moving subject, but I feel like if you're photographing someone stationary or anything stationary, you'll three have no feet. problem pre-focusing. Three feet, let's see. My initial thoughts with the 75 Sumalux, um, as I stated earlier in the video, I had a hard time getting used to the focal length. I felt like I would be either too far away or too close at first, but after some time, I kind of started to figure out where I needed to be standing. Much like in the 50 F1 Noctilux video, I did make minor edits to exposure, contrast, and white balance, but I left the colors relatively untouched. The colors are similar in tone with the 50 F1 Noctilux, but have a bit more saturation to them, mostly due to the F1.4 aperture. I feel like that adds a little bit more contrast to the colors. Some pros about this lens are the amazing signature and rendering as well as its versatility for portraits and landscapes. And I also forgot to mention that it performs pretty well in low light and I also shot some photos at night. The way it rendered these images in the fog were really dreamy and extremely beautiful. And we can't forget to mention the dreamlike signature. Some cons about this lens are its difficulty to nail critical focus through the rangefinder. I didn't use an EVF for the SLT for this one, but I feel like that is a good workaround. The coma and chromatic aberration and just overall imperfections of this lens could be a con, but as I mentioned before in the Noctilux episode, I see that as a pro, so I'm moving that up to the pro list. The size and weight is also kind of a con. I feel like it does get a little bit heavy when you are walking around with this lens. My hand did get a little tired. And lastly, this lens felt either too close or too far for what I wanted to do with it. That's mostly due to my lack of experience with the 75 millimeter focal length. I feel like if I spent more time with it and really getting to know how to use this lens and what I could do with this lens, then, you know, much like anything, it would be in my camera bag. Prior to making this video, I did as much research as I could on this lens and there really wasn't much out there. It seems like this lens was widely overshadowed by its successors, the 75 F2 APO Sumicron M lens or the 75 F1.25 Noctilux an odd aperture. While both those lenses did improve the optical design that this lens originally presented, it's not to say that this lens is poor in performance. I feel like this lens sits in a tier of its own next to the 50 F1 Noctilux where it bridges the gap between vintage and modern. The optical design and technological advancements that Dr. Mandler and his team created for Leica really shine with these lenses and are truly something special and continue to hold a place in many photographers' camera bags. And this wraps up another episode of Thumbprints and Signatures. Big thanks to Jerry for helping me out film the first part of this video. You can check out his Instagram right here, Big Boss Photo. And thank you to my girlfriend Gigi for helping me model for the night photos. Both of you guys are super helpful and I appreciate you both. Also make sure to comment down below what lens or lenses you might wanna see for future episodes. I'd really like your feedback just to see what you're interested in. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Carlo from Camera West TV. I'll see you next time.